on Super Thursday. This is Money Management. Welcome to the Money Management Show yet again. Uh, NAB has been very kind to uh, open their offices on 255 George Street and allow me to do a taped show. Uh, we're actually allowing me to have a week's holiday, Richard. Excellent. So the Money, Ma Money Management Show is a show tailored towards you, the individual investor. We have some themes on that show where we're trying to give you some insights and some tips on how to look after some of your investments and what are the various options available. And today I want to talk about a retail corporate bond opportunity. In other words, uh, a lot of people have talked about the bond market as being only the domain of the institutional investors, and I'm joined today by Richard Murphy, who is the Managing Director of the Australian Corporate Bond Company. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's right. And it, there's a little bit of combination about this because it's XTBs and then the, the holding, the, the managing entity. So thank you for taking the time, and it was at short notice. I really appreciate it. Let's talk about it. What is the Australian Corporate Bond Company? That is the management company of a range of securities that are listed on the exchange called XTBs. Yep. When there are securities listed on the exchange, there's usually a manager. So BlackRock is the manager of, of uh, iShares. Yep. So we, ACBC, is, are the manager of XTBs. Right on. And give me some sense of the background. I mean, you, you're, you have a few people now at work in this business. And so give me some sense of the company and then we'll talk sure. about the actual offering itself. The, the background was basically, you've, you've actually indicated what the background was, which was the corporate bond market has been the preserve, essentially, of the wholesale market. So there is a corporate bond market in Australia. There's lots of people saying there isn't. There is, of course, a corporate bond market in Australia. It's about $120 billion of corporate bonds and about another 100 of bank bonds. So there's quite a bit of a, a corporate bond mar yeah. market in Australia. It's interesting. I'll make the point. It's not on the ASX, though. That's right. I'll just make the point. It's interesting that you say that because that's true and we are trying to open it up to everyone to make them aware of it. This is a taped show, as you know, so what I'm talking about will happen today, but this will be not live, as you know. Um, NAB came out, uh, Brexit, we've got all the challenges. NAB came out and borrowed some money in the US market last mm -hmm. night. Yeah. And in US dollar terms, they borrowed $4 billion in three different tranches. Uh, and they did it in the space of 24 hours. Indeed, yep. So it shows that globally, a lot of people, whether they be professionals, and some of those funds will be, you know, uh, open to air, all sorts of investors, uh, look at the bond market differently. Mm. And, and XTB are trying to take what is a over-the-counter uh, awesome. offering yep. uh, to the ASX. So how does the dynamics of XTBs work? What, what is it that people will actually be buying? So what they're actually buying is an XTB is a unit in a single bond ETF, essentially. It's not actually an ETF because it's a single bond ETF. It doesn't track an index. But it's essentially like buying a unit in a unit trust where the trust owns the bonds and you're buying the unit on the ASX. So you can imagine um, XTBs as 39 single bond ETFs on the exchange. One's over Telstra, one's over National Australia Bank, yeah. one's over BHP, etc., etc. And what sort of... Um uh, liquidity is there in this sort of offering? Is it something that because it's, and, and I don't know what, what the average investment is. Like, is it a thousand dollars? What what sort of? The minimum money. investment is a hundred dollars. The average investment so far has been around forty, fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So you can buy them in in small amounts. So if you had fifty thousand dollars, you could buy ten different bonds at five thousand dollars each if you yeah. wanted to do that. So that that small. Um, hundred dollar increment allows you to diversify a lot easier and they're on the SX so the liquidity is provided by market makers so the market makers are buying the bonds in the wholesale market the yep. one you talked about and they are putting it in the trust getting the XTBs and then you can buy the XTBs on the SX so the liquidity is driven by the liquidity of the bond market if there was no liquidity in the bond market if that happened then there would be no liquidity in the XTBs but the bond market as I said is you know a hundred billion dollar plus market so that's where the liquidity comes from the thing about the bond market, and maybe you could talk to that point, a lot of people assume the bond market is one dynamic. Uh, it's not as it truly is, which is an array of dynamics. It's, it's fixed, it's floating, it's uh, senior, subordinated, it's uh, inflation linked. The offering that you're talking about, and, and bearing in mind, the opportunity here is just to talk about it. It's not that we are saying that this is what everyone should buy, everyone should go and get their own advice. But the offering that you're talking about is um, senior bonds. And how has that grown? If you can give me some sense of, and we'll talk about after the ad about the specific names, but can you talk about 
what the evolution of the issuing has been and what they are in terms of, is it only senior bonds? I don't know. It is currently only senior bonds, both fixed and floating. So we started out with 17 senior bonds, so senior, yep. subordinated, or, uh, and, and then hybrids and then equity. So they're, it's, it's the bond market is the senior bond market. So they're all senior. They're either fixed or floating. Started with 17 fixed, introduced floating, expanded the fixed range, and now we have 39, and we've got another four coming out in the next month, six weeks, more, right. some more floaters. Um, tell me about uh, how it's different. You mentioned an ETF. A lot of people will like to buy an ETF. Uh, what's the pros and cons? Is it, is it something that you could speak to? They, they're very similar in the legal structure. If you're a lawyer and got excited by structure, you'd see them as very, very similar structure. But ETFs generally track an index. Yep. And managed funds are usually actively managed and don't track an index. And you've got listed managed funds, you've got listed ETFs. These are single bond exposure. So when you buy an XCB and the bond matures in three years, the XCB will mature in three years. So that's very, very different to buying a perpetual diversified investment. So that gives you exposure to, say, the composite bond index, whereas this gives you exposure to BHP or Telstra or Ryzen or Illumina, for example. Um, Tell me about fees. I mean, I think since the GFC, one of the one of the themes have been that uh, I think a lot of people were in the wrong assets, and they then came back and said, "Look, it didn't perform, and I paid fees, and I went to an advisor." And so there's challenges on the advisor to articulate their value add. At the same time, you know, you you'll be having to make a case on what the fees are and why you charge them. Sure. And obviously, the fees are charged from bringing the the bond from the wholesale market, packaging it up in this format for listing on the exchange. And the cost of doing that is the, the main driver of the fees. So the fees for a fixed bond are uh, 40 basis points of the face value of the, of the bond. Mm -hmm. What that means really in practice is if there was a 4.8% um, Illumina bond um, or an Horizon bond, it would turn into a 4.4% Horizon XDB on the ASX. And that's so, an ongoing cost, the 40 basis points? No, that's, that's taken once yep. up front. So that when that bond pays coupons and when the principal is repaid, that's not touched at all. So it's not like an ETF. Again, it's different from an ETF where there's a constant annual fee that goes on in, in, into perpetuity. Yeah. There's one fee charged up front because we didn't want people having the experience of, of buying this security and thinking, well, that's like an Horizon um, XCB over an Horizon bond. We want them to have the experience of saying, well, I get the same coupon as the wholesale market gets and I get the same principle as the wholesale market gets. So we didn't want to touch yeah. those. So the only way to do it then, therefore, is take it out up front. So it's very transparent you see that when you buy uh, uh, the, the range of, of it's about 33 fixed that that fee translates through to about um, um, 30 um, three basis points to about 37 basis points off the price of the of the actual XTB. So that you, you compare that, you say, well, what's the end result? It's a range of yields from mid twos up to 4.8, 4.9, sometimes 5%, mm -hmm. depending on, on where the market's sitting at, versus where the most people are comparing that to is, well, what am I getting from my, my TDs? I'm getting, you know, 2 to 3% from TDs. This is a step up. TDs are here. They're pretty stable. A step up in risk. Borrowing from a because you're going to go to senior. You're, you're lending about. money to a company, not to a bank, so you'll get some, some, somewhat more return for somewhat more risk without going to equities and hybrids, which are more volatile. So it's a step in between the, those those two. So it's kind of a range of different steps as, as you're. Has that been a successful uh, pitch? Isn't the right way, but that education has that been a successful education process when you're talking to people about where turn deposits are, and I looked at some numbers, uh, you know, they're still in the $700 billion in turn deposits. Uh, has that been a successful experience when you talk to clients and say, look, I want you to move into a senior bond? Yeah. Have you felt that people have said, look, that makes sense, I need to get a better outcome in the cash bucket or the more conservative bucket? Has that made some sense? It's, yeah, the conversation has become over the, over the last year, it's really one about 787 billion in household deposits, 160 billion of self-managed super fund money sitting in deposits. It's really about what am I getting for that? I know that that $100 in the bank will still be $100 when I take it out. Um, I know that equities and hybrids give me a certain performance, but it's more volatile. What is there in between? And how much more do I get from the turn deposit? If I got 2.8%, can I get 3.8%, which is a big uplift? Do you talk about it in that sense? Do you talk about it in the sense that it's a 100% improvement or a 50% improvement on the on the cash piece, or how do you think about it? How do the clients think about it? Do they think, oh, it's still so low? What, what 
What has been the tone coming back from the customers? Uh, I think that whole tone has changed, and we're in the world of lower for longer all around the world. I think. 18 months ago, two years, people were saying, I wouldn't be interested in anything below 5%, and 5% has suddenly become 3%. So right. the conversation has changed, and really it is the differential between, I know what safe money looks like, a relatively safe sitting in a bank. I know what government bonds are in terms of where they sit. Now, what can you show me in terms of, a would I lend money to Woolworths? Would I lend money to to Horizon, and do I think they're going to be around in three years and pay me back? We'll talk about Woolworths and Horizon uh, after a word from our sponsors. So we'll go for our break for the night, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about specific names, we'll talk about some access, we'll talk about what education you might need to access this sort of uh, security. So we'll talk to you soon. From the moment we boarded our France river cruise, scenic were different. Dinners and concerts in iconic destinations. From the Pope's Palace on the Rhone River, to the Benedictine Palace on the Seine, and Chateau Giscours in Bordeaux. I can't believe scenic includes it all in the price, yet they do. An 11 day France river cruise from 4195. See your scenic agent or call 138 128. It takes a lot to create new life. Elevit has more folic acid and iron than any other pregnancy multivitamin. Folic acid is clinically proven to reduce the risk of neural tube defects. But it takes time to build up your nutrient levels. So you should start taking Elevit before you start trying. Take the first step for a healthy baby with Elevit, Australia's number one pregnancy multivitamin, with you every step. The new Kia Cerato comes with Australia's only seven-year warranty and a stunning new design inside and out across the range. It starts with the Cerato S from just $19,990. Drive away with free auto. Are you ready for me to blow your minds? <laughs> look at your website. Now look at mine. Back at yours. Yeah! Let's be honest. Your website is older than leftover noodles and it's starting to stink. You need Wix.com. Shut up! Wix. Create your stunning website today. Steel. Better chainsaws from one generation to the next. Get your steel chainsaw now from only $249. Buy better. Search steel chainsaws now. We know you've always worked hard for your money. Isn't it time your money worked hard for you? Invest with Latrobe Financial. Trusted by Australians for more than 60 years and judged Money Magazine's best mortgage fund seven years in a row. Nighttime is my time with Olay Regenerist Overnight Miracle. From first drop, it helps renew your skin and used with Olay's most advanced cream, it boosts skin renewal in just five nights. For firmer skin with visibly reduced wrinkles, search Olay Overnight Miracle. An all-inclusive luxury France river cruise with Scenic from only 4195. This extremely limited cruise offer will sell out fast. Call 138 128 today. Where is Alan Jones? He's up there in Alaska bear hunting with the Palins. Is he coming back? You did a magnificent job. Do we need Alan back? I don't think we do. We're going to have a great program. We've got to get you cooking. You've got to Chops get your hands dirty. Chops, Chops and mesh. Oh, we can do better than that. Latham and Kroger. Can't wait. Welcome back to the Money Management Show, the show that is designed for you, the individual investor. And we're trying to give you some insights and some options on some products that might be appropriate. They may not. We want everyone to go and get their right advice. I'm Mark Todd for the NAB. Um, I, I've been very lucky that the NAB have allowed us to tape in this, uh, in this room, in this environment. We're at 255 George Street. And we've been graced by Richard Murphy from the Australian Corporate Bond Company to talk about his product, which are XTBs. Uh, right now we want to talk a little bit more about the research, the names that we're talking about, how you access it, uh, how you as an investor, if you're interested, want to buy some of these products. And remember, uh, we'd like everyone to go and get their advice. There are all sorts of disclaimers, but the reality is it's your money. You need to think you've got a little bit of control on where you put it. Um, that seems appropriate. It's, it's such a crazy time. I mean, this is a tape show, but I don't think Brexit will have left the, the, uh, the shores. It seems to me that 
the, the tragedy of Brexit is that, and we've had people on the show um, talk about, they didn't know that the Leave campaign meant all the politicians would leave. They, they didn't realise that that's what it meant. They thought that's it meant. That's a good thing. They, yeah, well, it could be. They, they thought it meant something else. And now we have a situation where, at the time of uh, filming, you have uh, the Leave campaign has won. There hasn't been an obvious exit strategy on how to leave yep. Euro. There isn't an obvious yet leader. There had been Boris, but he, he lost mm -hmm. it in the last minute, or he was it was taken from him. Um, you now have the main, the main candidate is a Remain candidate, and that Remain that main candidate is to exercise how to leave the euro. So there's there's clearly um, lots of volatility. There's lots of volatility in that whole experience, and it's driven by political behaviour. And what it's meant is is uh, the pound has been hurt. You know, there's the there's things that that could be good for their economy. They could export out. Uh, but no one thought this was going to happen. No, no. one really thought on that Friday no. that the vote was going this way. And it's the global uncertainty just keeps on rolling on and on. And by the way, it's a dangerous thing to ask an Irishman about English politics, but so I won't, I won't get into the detail. Yeah. Um, well, you might have more it, people it coming. I think the North is going to yeah. head down there and they've got all sorts yeah. of passport oh, applications. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that Ireland isn't, just got bigger. It just, it, that, it, I can it, assure you, isn't going to happen. <laughs> it, it potentially got bigger. They, uh, you know, we don't know. It's a couple of weeks. It could be quite quick. Um, but it, it is much more volatile. It's, it's, Absolutely, yeah. And it's... Not as if um, we've been talking about lower for longer. Mm. Is there something to talk to the viewers about that it's much lower and it's much longer than people had anticipated? Remember, in December uh, of 2015, the Fed had anticipated, but well, they had lifted rates and yep. had anticipated there be another four rate hikes in 2016. As you know, in July, it's it's harder to imagine them doing any rate hikes. Um, what has that meant for bond markets? What's, what's happened in general in bond markets? Well, I think, as, as some of the viewers would know who, who watch your show on a regular basis, there's been a really long-term bond rally. And so every time there is another shaky situation, whether it's Greece or China mm -hmm. or Brexit or the election here, there's a, a, f a flight to quality. And quality, in this case, is usually government bonds around the world. And so there's been a rally in government bonds, as you know. And that has affected, obviously, corporate bonds because all bond markets are, 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 are connected. The, the one thing that does ex exhibit, though, in bond markets is relative stability. So when the world is going a bit crazy on us, and really you get a GFC over the next 10 years, you're going to get this sort of a, an environment. It's almost inevitable. Um, but the bond markets have shown an awful lot of capital stability. So pre-Brexit, post-Brexit, pre-election, post-election, um, corporate bonds and XCBs over them exhibited very strong capital stability. There was very, very little difference between pre and post, whereas equities, because of the nature of the equity class and hybrids that are more closely aligned there, will have a little bit more volatility or and sometimes a lot more volatility. So that's really that's one of the key defining differences for the end investor out there is, well, I, I need stability in my, in my portfolio. I need an anchor, a stable anchor. You won't get that with equities. You will get it with, with bonds, and therefore that's the reason for, for being diversified. So, but, yeah, yeah my, our, our view certainly is aligned with everybody else's view, which is lower for longer, that there, there is going to be ongoing uncertainty in, in, in the market, and, and really investors need to be thinking about whether it's actually good times or bad times or in between. The fixed income plays a role. Um, all times as in a diversified portfolio. So for the viewers who don't buy fixed income, I think it, it might be appropriate to just explain a capital stack because you have, if it's a bank capital stack, you'd have term deposits and covered bonds. You would have then senior bonds. You'd then subordinate hybrids and equity. And the way to think about it is what provides you the high return? Theoretically, the lower, the greater risk, which is equities. So in the event a company is wound up, and we are talking uh, one of the four majors being wound up if you buy that, so there's not a great deal of likelihood of that, but it, you have to think about it in the context of the return you're getting. In the event it's been wound up, the first loss happens with equity, the last loss would happen with term deposits. Mm. What Rich is talking about is, in a corporate sense, the senior bonds. So it's senior, subordinate and equity. He's saying uh, they're more stable because there's less chance of the company not repaying its debts. And so that's how you think about the capital stack. As a consequence, um, you need to think about the return you're getting. So if you're taking less risk, you might get a smaller return. 
I think of it in respect of how you build out a portfolio. I know you've, you've referenced equities and hybrids and uh, Westpac launched the bond, it's rallied as it hits in, in that, sorry, launched the hybrid, it's rallied as it's landed on the ASX. Is it more about creating a portfolio of a sliver of all of it? Is that the way you think about it? Or are you saying, uh, my dogma is it's only this? I mean, how do you think about that portfolio no. construction? No, I mean, I, I spent 20 years at the ASX on the equity side of things, so it is about diversification, as you, as you suggest, because equities are great when, um, when things are going well and they pay good um, dividends and when, when the share price appreciates, you get capital returns. Um, hybrids give you a superior coupon rate, if you like, or dividend um, rate than senior bonds, but they're, they're also like equities, a bit more volatile. So it, it is about diversification across an asset stack, and it isn't all about let's buy every security a bank has an issue. You obviously have property over there and other securities as well. Yeah. So, um, so absolutely diversification. It's just there's a place for everything and everything in its place. So when we think about fixed income, we, we think about you are definitely lending somebody money and are going to pay you back. So if your investors think, or your watchers rather, um, think that they're not in fixed income if they hold a bank term deposit, I think of that as, as fixed income. I think of cash in a cash management trust as fixed income. You're giving somebody money, they're going to pay it back, and you're going to get something along the way. And we think of that as fixed income. And we think hybrid is in the middle between that and equities, and equities are what they've been for 100 years. So let's talk about the names you're actually talking about. Let's not name all 39, but no, give me no, some no, sense of the, the yeah. names that you're talking about. You've mentioned um, a few different uh, issuers, so people <coughs> are borrowing the money. Uh, what are the names? What are the more popular ones? Um, they're, they're basically top 75 companies. Uh, the more popular ones tend to be the, the higher yielding ones. Um, and also the floating rate, we've got floating rate ones, some people are buying that as an alternative to cash management, but that's, a, that's kind of another story. But in the fixed uh, rate bonds, it ranges from the lowest yielding would be a bit National Australia Bank's, probably the safest um, um, corporate in there, up to Illumina, which is close to 5%, which is the highest yielding bond. And it's got Qantas in there, Lendlease, Horizon, uh, Telstra, BHP, all the sort of um, big names, West Farmers, that you, you would see, you know about from equity land. Um, that's, they are also bond issuers in that wholesale market. Uh, you and I can't get them generally because you have to go and you, know, you have to be uh, reasonably uh, wealthy to be able to buy you know, large chunks of bonds. This is about buying them on the exchange. Richard's talking about as an investor, you need to be what is deemed to be a sophisticated investor. There's an array of different ways to think about that. It's certainly, it's around how much money, and I won't go into the minutia, but it's how much money you earn per annum or how much assets you have as net assets. So there will be somebody, uh, an accountant will tell you if you're a sophisticated investor. And that's not to say you don't do what Rich is talking about, but it's, he's saying that the bonds that he's talking about are over the counter bonds are normally, are, are, yeah, are only available for um, sophisticated investors as, as per what the regulations require. Um, access. Talk to me about access. Where do I buy them? So, because they're listed on the ASX, they're suddenly available on all the brokers, and they're suddenly available on all the platforms. And so, putting them on the ASX essentially takes that bond, which is not really technology friendly, and sticks it on the ASX, it becomes technology friendly. Suddenly, it's available everywhere. So, wherever you buy shares or ETFs or REITs today, you'll be able to buy XTBs as well. So, it's through your advisor, through your broker, through your online. Um, Compsec or NAB trade. Um. We we work on a principle that the people will pay you back. You know, it's 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 the likelihood of default versus the return you're getting. So the likelihood of default is very small. The return might be a little bit less. It might be modest. And you need to think about it relevant to what other conservative assets you are you are achieving. But w what's the research like for people who don't know some of those names that you mentioned, um, or don't know the difference between equity research and fixed income research, and it is different, it's about well, the likelihood of default. How do they source research? How do they get information? So if you're going through an online broker, you're obviously deciding, I don't want research because they're not giving you any research. But if you go to a corporate, um, if you go to a, a, a full service broker, you're getting advice from the broker and they're using research. They're either using Lonsec research or they're doing their own, I know ORDs do their own research on the bonds and therefore the XTVs. Um, there are providers, uh, one called Bond Advisor, and Bond Advisor is selling 
uh, research on 1,200 different bonds to, to National Australia Bank, to the various brokers. The viewers would know Bond Advisor, he's a regular on our show, it's Nick Yaxley, and I, and I do, I like what Nick writes, I think it's interesting. I, I'm not saying that uh, he's the only guy out there, but he's certainly a guy that's out there that knows his stuff. They, they, they do that very, very well, and, and, and Morningstar obviously provides research as well. So there are, there are various uh, sources of research. What I find when I talk to advisors, though, um, around the country is where they generally start, given these are top 75 companies, the first question is, are these investment grade or not investment grade? And the answer is yes, they're all um, investment grade issuers. And then they actually tend to go towards the equity research and start looking at the equity research. And your point's absolutely valid that um, equity research and fixed income or credit research is different and they look at different things. So I like the fact that um, people like Bond Advisor and Nicky Axley and, and that team is actually giving these guys research to say, look, this, this is what the equity research guy says about Horizon, and here, by the way, is what the credit research says about it, because they are different. They're different. Uh, two halves of the same coin, ultimately, but they are a different perspective. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think about the pitfalls? What are the pitfalls to this? Because it won't be... Uh, you know, it won't solve everyone's problems. What, what are you saying? Look, there's some things I just can't do. Well, what would that be? Pitfalls in bond investment generally, or do you mean in, in, in XTVs? Um, I, mean, I don't want you to undermine your own business, don't get me wrong, but it, you know, we all have our own problems, yeah. and, there's, and there's something you need to point to because yep. if people buy that and go, hang on, I didn't know this would happen, like what, what would it, you say there's some challenges around the evolution of your business? One, one of the things we wanted to avoid, and this would have been a pitfall, is if when you buy an XTB over BHP, you're actually taking a risk on us, Australian Corporate Bond Company, yep. or the responsible entity. And the way to avoid that is, is to actually set up a managed investment scheme, a trust, yep. so that if we actually disappear from the equation, um, and even the responsible entity disappears in the equation, um, ASIC steps in and replaces them, nothing happens to the bonds that have been bought. They're sitting in a trust in AustraClear. Um, safe for the XTB holders. So that would be the main risk if you're actually yeah. taking risk against us. So we, we've removed that. Really, the, the main risk is that the bond issuer falls over. So Telstra falls over, unlikely. National Australia Bank, unlikely. But um, Horizon um, falling over or Illumina falling over is more likely than Telstra or National Australia Bank. So that's really your main risk, credit risk, that the issuer is not going to, to pay back uh, what they've paid. Um, okay. Beyond that, the, the trust is a managed investment scheme and you're reasonably protected by the law. Richard, wish you all the very best. Uh, I, you know, I like the initiative. I like the idea that we can get some retail bonds to, sorry, so we can get some bonds to retail investors. I think that's a, the initiative is great. So uh, I'm sure everyone will go and get their own advice and work out whether it best suits them. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the show. This has been on the retail bond market. Uh, I'm Mark Todd from the Lab. I've been joined by Richard Murphy. Appreciate you taking the time and hope you enjoy your Thursday night. All the very best.